Mara, my sister, brother, brother, where are you? Trusting that you are doing well. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. I come here early because I've, I'm waiting for a um, someone to do some work. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, I'm not quite sure what time, but it will be around my video time. So I decided to do it early. So how are you? Trusting that you are doing well. So I am cooking. I was cooking, but... Uh, my kids came, so I'm here. I am, and this is uh, for my 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 girlfriend's garden. Look at this! Isn't it pretty? Isn't this beautiful? So I'm not cooking this one today, but I am cooking this one like this. It's a smaller one. Look at this one from her garden, my girlfriend's garden. Check this out! Isn't this nice? So I'm cooking a smaller one like this today. For dinner and then there's a green one like this as well so I'm doing that so and then from off my tree I've got fresh lemon look at these guys how big these lemons are so I got fresh lemons off my tree and then this is what I'm having for breakfast I thought I bought the bowl in here these they look don't look like they're ripe right but these are homegrown guys these are homegrown I have my plate let me go ahead and get my plate hold on I'm going to move these for right now. Hold on. Okay. Oops, there we go. So, if you look at it, isn't that pretty? Beautiful, beautiful. They're delicious. I had about five of these yesterday cut up i don't put no syrup or anything on them i just eat them just like that in the natural state nothing like being natural my sister my brother why would i put all that other stuff on there so that's what i'm having for breakfast and then i just dropped my book hold on and i need to find my bible and she just woke up and don't want to go down. So let me look at my, I just lost my page from my Bible. My Bible. Hold on, I'm looking at 2 Corinthians 4, verses 18. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. Okay, there we go. So I just want to show you in uh, my garden and then my friend that brought the stuff from her garden she's in the city and i'm in the country and so it's amazing you can just go out right now you can just go in my garden and you can pick these delicious and then you could just uh, i usually bring them in and wash them but some people just wipe them and then just eat them All right so that's good i think i've got my grandson playing with that apple over there a toy so with that my sister and brother it's a beautiful day and it's great when we could grow our own stuff so try to grow something my sister and brother try to grow something we have watermelon in the garden right now and i think some and i think some squash or something else my husband plant so we got some stuff going right we got some stuff going in the garden oh. yeah we do we do we do uh-huh so let us bow for prayer as we get into our devotion. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. Thank you for my sister, my brother that stopped by here today, Father God. Continue to bless each and every one of us. And Father God, we thank you. We thank you for giving us another opportunity to get our lives in order. Right now, Father God, we're asking you to decrease me so that you'll be increased. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you, Father God, for hearing, for answering through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So I tried to put her down twice because I wanted to finish my cooking. So I, I just started cutting up this uh, this squash. So but she does not want to go down. She just woke up. So let's move. Go over to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter four verse eight eighteen. Second Corinthians chapter four verses eighteen and it reads, "While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen." For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Does that make sense? Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. 
For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. Let's get into our topic, and our topic is, Christ points us to a more glorious world. Christ points us to a more glorious world. Father God, as we go into this topic, Father God, as you point us to your most glorious world, Father God, we ask you to open our hearts and our mind to receive this information. Thank you, Father God, for hearing, for answering through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Mm. Okay, so here we go. Earth and earthly things will perish with thy using. As years will pass by and death will come, your eternal destiny will be fixed, eternally fixed. If your soul is lost, which will compensate you for this lot? Let me go back. If your soul is lost, what will compensate you for its loss? Christ, the life giver. Christ, the redeemer. Christ, the lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world, points us to another nobler world. He brings it within range of our of your vision. He takes you to the threshold of heaven and brings you to contemplate the glories of eternal reality, that your aspiration may be quickening to grasp the far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. As you contemplate heavenly scenes, desire is kindling in your heart to have friendship with God, to be wholly reconciled to Him. Our Savior works is to adjust the claims between earthly and heavenly interests, to put the duties and the responsibility of life that is now in proper relations to those that pertains to eternal life. The fear and love of God are the first thing that should claim our attention. Let me repeat this. The fear and the love of God are the first thing that should claim our attention. We cannot afford to put off that which concern our soul's interest till tomorrow. The life which we now live, we are to live by faith in the Son of God. We are redeemed from the, the, the beggarly elements of the world with a redemption that is full and complete, that cannot be increased by any supplement from human source resource. From, let me go back. Let me go back. We are redeemed from the beggarly elements of the world with the redemption that is full and complete that cannot be increased by any supplement from human sources. But in the midst of this flood of mercies, the plentitude of divine love, many hearts continue in indifference, careless, and, impressed, and unimpressed by the provisions of God's grace. Shall we, who claim to be Christian, make no effort to break the spell which Satan hath cast upon their soul? That's a question. That's a question. Are you okay? Are you okay? Okay. I'm glad you are. Okay. So it goes on. It says here. Let me. I just lost my place. That's a question. Where's the question starts? Okay. It stayed here. Shall we, who claim to be Christian, make no efforts to break the spell which Satan has cast upon their souls? Shall we let go, let them go on in, in hardness of heart? Shall we let them go in the hardness of heart without God and without hope in the world? No. Although every appeal we May we may make may be slightly and refused. We cannot cease to pray for them and to make tender uh, entreaty for their souls. We must do all we can through the aid of God's Holy Spirit 
to break down the barriers by which they have sought to make themselves impreg impregnable to the lights of God's truth. We must, we must, we must seek to open their eyes to their blindness, to loose them from the captivity of Satan. So we got work to do, my sister and brother. So the first thing we need to do, though, is for us to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior in our life or ourself, my sister and brother, and then be the example that he called each and every one of us to be. Then at that point, you can go and share that. But by you just doing those th those two things, my sister and brother, someone will come and say, hey, what's so different about you? What are you doing differently? And then you can point them to Jesus, my sister and brother. Jesus, there's so many people that's hurting right now. There's so many people that's going to struggling. Some people are just stressed out. Oh, I don't know what's going on. My sister, brother, if we read the word, we know that everything has to collapse. That, you know, this world has to, sin has to play out. And as we're going into this drama that's, that's, a fo that's folding before our eyes, we as Christians need to be more prayerful, need, need to go into more fasting, and praying for our souls and also praying for the souls of our family, that they too, the ones that not have not made a decision, that they too will make a decision to follow the Lord. However, we are just a messenger. If they choose not to, that's on them. If they choose to, it's also on them. And it's great either way you take it. Because God is a God of love. He's not a God that's going to force you to do something that you do not want to do. We are all here to glorify him. But if we don't want to, God is not going to force you. So my sister and brother, I pray that you have made your calling and election sure, standing on the winning team. From Genesis to Revelation, we know the plan of redemption state that Jesus wins the battle in the end, my sister and brother. So the war is raging and it's getting it's intense. It's like a mother, uh, a pregnant mother is going into labor. The pain gets intensified close to the coming of the baby, right? So it's the same thing with the coming of Jesus. The pain, the labor pain, the sin of this world will, will intense, will get so bad, my sister and brother, it's think that even the very elect might be deceived. So my sister and brother, we as God's children, we that standing on the Ten Commandments of God, need to study more my sister and brother and continue to pray more fasting for one another for actually start with yourself and then move on to your other family member but be the example my sister and brother be the example so they could say yes you have spent time with the lord because there's so many fake christians that's running around everybody has a sign say christian 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 stamp stamp christian christian but then when you look at their lifestyle, what comes out of their mouth, they are not a reflection of the Lord. So you don't fall I pray that you're not falling in that category. Christian meaning that you have separated yourself from the world, that we are in the world, but not of the world. Does that make sense? There's a different diet. There's a different dress code. There's a different way of speaking. There's a different way of carrying yourself as women of God. As men, brothers and sisters of God, there's a different way you carry yourself. Not like the world, my sister and brother. So there should be a distinction. And if you, if you look at it, the distinction between uh, those that are keeping the commandments of God is and the world is a big separation right now. And it's going to get deeper, my sister and brother. So let us be remain faithful until the end. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you for this message. I thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, to point us to what we really need to do, Father God, to give you glory, Father God, to give you glory, and knowing that this world will pass away soon. Father God, we ask you to be with my sister, my brother, Father God. Give us the strength that we need in these last days. Father God, allow us to see or feel your presence today, Father God. If we have said or done anything, Father God, that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, we ask you to wash us, to clean us up, Father God. We give you permission. And then, Father God, we ask you to use this empty vessel. Allow us to be a witness to someone today. I thank you, Father God, for hearing. I thank you for answering to the Holy Spirit. 
In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, this is Birdo Warrior. Find me at BirdoWarrior.com. Follow me over YouTube under Birdell Warrior. And those of you that are supporting my ministry, thank you, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate your help. I really, and I did purchase my uh, new tripod. So thank you so much for the donation for that. And with that, my sister and brother, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Are you sleepy? Are you sleepy? So let's go ahead and do the four hugs for survival. So we're going to do the hugs. Do the hugs. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four. So my sister and brother, I love you. appreciate you until tomorrow. What is my schedule for tomorrow? Guys, my schedules keep on changing. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, back to school tomorrow for some people. Back to school tomorrow. Um, so my daughter goes back to school tomorrow, right? I'm going to go back to work tomorrow. And so with that, my sister and brother, I love you. I appreciate you. And thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. May God continue to rich, richly bless you and your family. So let me get back to taking care of my grandchildren. And then from there, what else are we doing? We're going to do some walking today. We're going to walk today. Okay, we're going to do some walking today. And then um, I'm going to get things. I haven't even started. I'm cutting up my vegetables right now. And then I'm washing right now. So it's a couple of things that we're doing. And then we're waiting for a call so we can do the something else we have to do today, right? And in the meantime, we're just going to love on each other, right? And she just woke up. So with that, my sister, brother, I love you. appreciate you until tomorrow. Uh, if my schedule changes, I'll be here early. If not, we'll be here at 11 o'clock. So with that, talk to you soon. Take care.